Welcome to the City of the Gods. You guys, we're at Teotihuacan. I'm about to geek out all over this video today. I've been like obsessed with ancient civilizations, specifically the Mayan, and it is just really cool to be here. This is not a Mayan temple. In fact, they don't even know who built these. So while she's gonna be geeking out because this is her jam, this is actually my first time ever being at an ancient ruin. I've never seen pyramids before. I've never seen ancient ruins before. So this is gonna be a pretty spectacular first experience for me. So we took an Uber here this morning. You can take a bus for pretty cheap. I think it's about 50 Mexican pesos each direction, but we wanted to make sure we got here right when it opened so we can beat the crowds. This place gets really crowded and the last thing I wanna do is try to climb this pyramid with 800 other people. To think we're about to walk on steps that are just ancient, like thousands of years ago. I, it's indescribable, that feeling. So this is what we're about to climb. Luckily it's in the shade and it's not crawling with people yet, so. <laughs> Here we go. It's the kind of thing you don't want to mess around on. The Pyramid of the Sun is the tallest pyramid in the world that you're able to climb. Hopefully we don't die. Luckily we're in the shade. Now we're in the shade. And now uh, we're gonna make our way up there. Ready? Here we go. Let's do it. Oh! <laughs> So Teotihuacan was built in the first century and ended up collapsing in 700 AD. And the Aztecs didn't discover the city until centuries later. So when they came, they thought it was the city of the gods. They didn't know who built it. They thought the gods built it. So that's why they named it appropriately. We made it. It actually wasn't that bad. It didn't take very long, so, I mean, it is steep, but it didn't take too long. Teotihuacan was one of the largest cities in the ancient world with upwards of 200,000 people living here at its peak. So, people say that when you come up here, it's supposed to be a very spiritual place. People come up here, they meditate, and you're supposed to raise your arms in the air and absorb the sun energy. And just take it all in. It does feel very powerful up here. This is where um, only the, I wanna call them priests, but that's not right. Like the powerful people came up here. This is where they did sacrifices. They sacrificed people and animals. Um, they've even found people who were um, like military folks, they found them with their hands and feet bound behind them. Some of them were decapitated, so they don't really know what the purpose of the sacrifices were for, why certain people were sacrificed the way they were. Historically speaking, generally sacrifices are done to please the gods, to pray for like a bountiful harvest or a good summer, but there's nothing that specifically sedates that that's why sacrifices were performed here. And they even sacrifice children. <laughs> what I find most interesting about this place is that it's almost an exact replica of the Great Pyramids in Egypt. The base of the pyramid we're standing on right now is almost exactly the same size as the largest pyramid in Egypt. This pyramid of the moon, the pyramid of the sun we're standing on, and the smaller one of Quetzalcoatl across the way, they're in the exact same placement as they are in Egypt. They're exactly lined up with Orion's belt. So they were really big 
mathematicians and astronomers. In fact, this entire complex is based on the solar system. So it all revolves around the sun, which is where we're standing now. And it just really fascinates me. down which is my bane of existence so we just saw the murals of the puma <laughs> which you can hear behind us these people the vendors have these cool little like noisemakers and they sound like pumas or jaguars uh, but the jaguar or puma was a symbol of power and um, they were native to this area. Um, and they've actually found bones, sacrificial bones here from uh, like giant cats. Most likely the majority of these buildings were covered in murals and covered in paintings. You can also hear they have little eagle sounds. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but those are symbols of um, power and prosperity, the Warriors. eagle and the, yeah, the, the puma. So um, a lot of really cool symbolism here. I don't know what that one is. <laughs> I don't either. So we're walking towards the pyramid of the moon, La Luna. And this is the second largest pyramid here. So we're on the Avenue of the Dead right now. And that's because when the Aztecs came and they found this city, they thought that all of this was tombs. So they named it appropriately, the Avenue of the Dead or Avenida de los Muertos. So this is where we might lose some people because <laughs> we're gonna talk about some aliens. But one of the most fascinating things about the pyramids, both in Egypt and here, is that they're energy, energy conductors. Inside the pyramids here, they've found mica, which comes from Brazil over 3,000 miles away. And it's an energy conductor, but it, it makes it so it doesn't get really hot inside. And so... Yeah, it's a dielectric. It's stable up to 500 degrees Celsius, I believe. Yeah. And so mica is actually found in every single building in this entire complex. So it's just an interesting point that most people like leave out of the history of what, perhaps why these pyramids were built in the first place. It might have been aliens. <laughs> and it's just interesting that, you know, in these pyramids and in the ones in, in ancient Egypt, or in Egypt, um, there's a lot of similarities in the way that they're designed, the way they have certain channels, uh, underground tunnels. Yeah. You know, they found things like liquid mercury yeah. underneath here. Only in the last couple of years, they just found an entire chamber filled with liquid mercury. Um, and they don't know why. And that's actually been discovered in a couple of pyramids throughout like Latin America. In Egypt, the tunnels themselves, or maybe the pyramids entirely, they're made out of granite. And so granite becomes an energy conductor. And so the way that the shafts inside are pointed, they actually conduct energy and point straight towards Orion's belt. They've also found what they call mysterious metallic spheres inside the pyramids here. And so they said that um, things that were shiny <laughs> or reflective were a symbol of the underworld. That was a way for um, people to see into the underworld, I guess. And it also could have been, had something to do with like the conducting of energy. So um, that's why also the liquid mercury is interesting because they were thinking maybe it was like a whole river of underworld connection in some capacity. They also think there may possibly be a tomb behind the liquid mercury, but it's very dangerous to be exposed to that and they only just found it in the last couple of years, so there could be people buried here. Really could be on the Avenida de, de los Muertos. Yeah. So right behind us here, you can see there's actually probably structures that are just unexcavated. They just simply don't have the money or really the desire. There's already so many that they've 
taken the effort to uncover, but there's a bunch of these mounds where treasures lay underneath. So now we're in the patio of the pillars, which I think is probably, I think the most interesting thing we've seen so far. You can see all the intricate details on the walls here and everything is here. You can still see the original um, coloring that they use to plaster the walls. Really neat. So one of their main exports here was obsidian and that's because it was so plentiful being a volcanic region. And so they used it in decorations. They used it as their main export. They would make like ceremonial daggers or axes out of it and that's how they would basically build up their economy so it's 11 30 people have shown up <laughs> a couple of recommendations we have you get here right at 9 a.m when they open hit the pyramid of the sun first we'll show you the line going up the stairs right now that's what we were trying to avoid and i'm glad we did yeah it's about a mile and a half walk uh, from the entrance all the way to the end. So you're gonna hit it all anyway, so you may as well start where it's gonna get the busiest first, and then you get to kind of just take your time everywhere else. Yeah. But uh, it's backed up. Yeah. So we've come to the last pyramid, which is actually the first one that you can see when you enter, but we decided to keep it for the last. Quetzalcoatl. This was really, really cool. Just the energy here, the experience here, the feeling of walking in an area that has been around for thousands of years is just indescribable. Really, 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 really cool. Really unique. Really, really cool. <laughs> so overall, I think we likely probably missed out on some interesting information by not having a guide, but I did a bunch of research before. I think the little plaques that they have give you enough information that you can kind of figure it out. And we kind of listened to some other guides and <laughs> talking to their groups here and there. So um, overall, super great. Highly recommend. This place is pretty magical. Teotihuacan. Or Avenida de los Dum. Or. So the period of mud <clears throat> water was the source of the energy. Like, conducted with the well, granite. <laughs> something something electricity. 